Yes, how's it going? Oh, I thought I was gonna, I thought I was gonna have two different mics. Welcome, welcome to Friday Night Lights. I'm your host, Rhymester from the Ever Evolve Collective. Shout out to Scotty Rocks for having us. Like you said, you know, we've been working on Friday Night Lights for the past year. We've been shooting multiple pilots with multiple artists. Shout out to them for, you know, coming through and allowing us to test this. But today is the official launch, episode one to this series, The Birth, The Awakening. What's another synonym for that? The Rebirth. All right, all right, I guess. You didn't put much effort into that. The Ascension. The evolution. There we go. Okay, now see, now, there we go. Now, now you guys are talking. So I have three special guests tonight. My guest number one is Impulsive. He's a talented hip hop artist. He's an aspiring illustrator, and he's a truth seeker. Guest number two is Mike Logic. He's a sharp and tongue twisted MC. He's a brand ambassador of Shy Native Entertainment. He's also a radio personality at Shy Native Radio, and he just launched a brand new podcast called All Net for you basketball lovers out there. And lastly, we got my boy Keem, a smooth singer, a pianist, and I heard from the dog not so much the pony, that he just might be a brand ambassador for the dog and pony show. So Damn. we got a lot, we got a lot in store tonight. Damn. These guys are gonna give you some performances, but we're gonna kick it off with Impulsive. So Impulsive, how you doing today, man? Honestly, this is wild. The first guest on the first episode? Well, I'm how many, honored. Uh, uh, the honored. first guest on the official episode. Okay, uh, the official episode, all right. Yes. I'm still honored, very yeah, yeah, honored. Yeah, of course, I, yes, I want yes, you to be honored. Yes. How was the drive here? Where did you come from, Orland Park, right? Orland Park, and actually it was very nostalgic. I went through my old neighborhood, Avondale, off of uh, Central Park in Belmont. So I saw my old apartment, and I was like, very nostalgic coming there here. You go. So, you know, us as MCs, you know, we kind of go through names. We go through a lot of names. So I know I had some obnoxious names when I was coming up. I don't want to say any because you guys might research me. I hope it's not on YouTube or anything, but give me some names before the impulsive. Like, what were some rap names that you had before impulsive? A lot, a lot of names. Um, the first one was Mystic. Uh, it was based off Natural Mystic by Bob Marley. Just love the song. I was a little stoner in high school. Then Mystify, which was a lyric from a grammatic producer, one of his instrumentals. So like Mystic, Mystify, Evolution. Then there was too many Mystifies when I was looking on Google online and I, I couldn't do it. So the next name was Baja, and that was based off a taco that I love, the Baja Taco. So then everybody was like, Baja Blast from Taco Bell, and I was like, I can't do this name anymore. Um, you could have got sponsored by Taco Bell. I could have, but I don't even like Taco Bell like that. It was, ugh. I'm a Maria shout out in Orland Park. But I know, then, I know one of our guests likes Taco Bell. I'm not going to say his <laughs> name, though. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I can talk about Taco Bell a lot because I used to eat it a lot. But um, then the next name after Baja was Smirk. And Smirk just sounded too dark, too demonic, too weird, too like mischievous, and that wasn't really me. Like I have that within me, but that's not my main personality attribute, you know. So then I went to Johnny MC, which is kind of like my name, John McCormick, Johnny, Johnny MC. MC, Johnny MC. And then again, a Google search, there's too many Johnny MCs out there, and I just was like, I can't compete, I can't copyright, I can't license, I don't want to ask other people to, for the name. Um, so then Impulsive, Impulsive is the, the official name. So how did the three eyes? come in front of impulsive so it's actually three i's in the beginning and three e's at the okay, end yeah three i's yes, yes. three e's so how did that come to be so that is like i'm not too deep into what i'm about to say but numerology um 33 was always a number that followed me everywhere all the time kind of like a synchronistic thing license plates receipts just out in the world um um and it kind of became like whenever I saw that, I felt like I was like evolving in my own personal life and artistic life. So that was kind of like three I's, three E's, 33. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, I like that. So I've been in the studio with you quite a lot. We're working on some projects. Uh, while I was recording you, I could sense through your lyrics that you're very, like, so you're a spiritual person. You're all about, you know, spirituality. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how does your spirituality tie into your music and tie into your, your, your illustrations? It's super intense, honestly. Because, like, I've been spiritual in the practice of, like, breath work, movement through dance, and kind of, like, just different medicines, whatever that is, like, through food or herbs, whatever, self-medication. But with music, spirituality kind of comes back in with the breath work, because I like to rap fast, and I've, obviously, if there's MCs watching, sometimes when you're rapping, you have to find the flow, and, like, you can't force... Like, say if you have, like, animated, nobody can handle my random insanity. Like, that took, like, time to, like, find the to, words. You had to find that, the breath in there. Yeah, because if you try to go on stage and be like, animated, nobody can handle my random insanity, and then, like, you're out of breath, that, that looks bad on you. You feel bad. That fucks up your whole performance. But when I achieve that kind of flow in my breath, it feels really good, and that becomes, like, a breath work for me. 
on top of that, you're moving around as an MC. You're sweating on stage. Your heart races up. So already, you're already kind of losing a little breath because you know right. your body right. is like that. So me as an MC, like man, I I tell you, it took me years to learn how to say to breathe from your stomach. Right. Yeah. I record still people. Learning. I, I record people and I literally tell them like, I want you to listen to this, and they'll be like, da 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 da, and I have to go back and edit it. And there's nothing wrong with that because like that's my job. But I tell them like, look. You want you want to sound clean. You want to sound you know sharp and crisp. And then like, but it takes time. It takes years. It takes practice so to do that. Time. But a lot of people don't realize that you know like they just think they could just you know go in there and be like, well I could just you know do this or do that. And there's you know right, right. around there's guys who like punch in a lot and you know all that. But I'm like, when you do this live, how are you gonna do it? Exactly. Yeah, because like music in your headphones is one thing, and like if you get it crispy, fuck yeah. But your live performance should really reflect you as like an MC and your skills. You should be able to hold it down, respect the mic, and like breathe. <laughs> So that's breathe. my answer. MCs, breathe. 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 Take a breathing class. Man, you should teach a breathing class. How about that? Could you I'm do that? learning. I could. I can't really teach it just because I don't have the credentials, but there's this guy I will reference, Weemhoff. He's also considered the Iceman. He's, like, walked up the side of Mount Everest in just, like, shorts, and like, but through breath work, he does it successfully and, like, will come back feeling just, like, alive and activated. And that's where I've been learning breath work meditations through him. It's Can like find him on YouTube? Yeah. Uh, it's like there's type in 11-minute Wim Hof meditation breathwork technique, and he'll sit you through it, and you'll do about like 25 deep breaths as much as you can. Then you hold your breath for about like – he usually goes like 45 seconds, and then you exhale. And like do that three times, and by after that – he goes into the science of it, but it, like you'll feel your shoulders come down. You'll feel tension in your body melt away, and it becomes very like honestly therapeutic and healing, and it's powerful breath like it's it's like meditation in a sense 100 percent, because like it, breath is subconscious but it can also be conscious and when you become conscious with it you hack your own like brain for real okay so i see yep. you're repping the colombian flag i have to i have to so yes. what i like being in a studio with artists is you know there's like those down times in between where like you know maybe like a beats uploading or waiting for somebody to send something and then you know you just you just chop it up and you just talk with one another and you know we talked quite a lot and you were telling me about uh, your adoption so how old were you when you found out that you were adopted so adoption's always been there it's never been like oh my god i'm adopted it's um always been there but as of like i lived in colorado and i moved back 2 years ago and moving back has been like a reclaiming of my colombian identity ethnicity heritage so I guess like I'm in this like re reclaiming process right now with adoption. Um, so that's why you've probably seen me at shows with this because I have lyrics that reference it, and it just makes me feel good. Like because I was never like I was raised Irish American, and like the heritage culture kind of just only really shown in food, I guess, and maybe St. Patrick's Day getting drunk, drinking Guinness. I love Guinness, but now it's like all right, I'm learning about Colombia. They had their own revolutions. They had their own like infested by conquistadors and they had their own experience of like oppression and they rose from it they're even named after christopher columbus too what a fucking like yeah, it, yeah it's i don't know so right now i like i've performed with this at shows and i like, have other colombians come up to me be like dude fuck yeah so i want to keep showing that i'm colombian to get connect with other people so the perspective changed when you came back to chicago so it yeah. really woke you up yeah oh uh, how, old, how old were you when you came back uh, I'm 26 now, so about 24. 24. What made you come back? Um, kind of a job and coming back to family. I wanted to, like, when I moved away to Colorado, I felt very, like, I'm like, damn, I just, like, totally ghosted my family, and I'm just, like, living my life away from them. I want to be there for these moments. Like, I got three younger sisters, uh, or two sisters and one brother, and they're all, like, still young enough to where they're in the house, so I was like, I'm going to move back home so I can, like, get some more memories with them. So that and then a job in the hemp industry. So I do creative stuff in the CBD space. Is that why you went to Colorado? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you learn some skills over there when it came to... Yeah, I'm pretty much self-taught. I mean, I went to Columbia College downtown, which taught me some like few basic technique things. But um, kind of like Scotty, I like do my own thing. When I go home on the computer, the Mac, I watch tutorials. I spend enough time. I get my 10,000 hours, you know? There you go, your 10,000 hours. Yeah. I challenge myself and I say, screw that 10,000. Like, I got I to gotta get 100,000 hours in. No, seriously, I got to get 100,000 hours yeah. in, you know. So, that that, I love called? that book, yeah. yeah. I got to check uh, that one out. We'll put the link right here, Outliers. Outliers, Blink, what other books? A lot of books he wrote. Um, another question I had when it came to your illustrations, 
when you did one for me, well, I know I've seen you doing it for other people, then you did one for me, and like just got great feedback, and then you know just kind of like domino effect. Everybody just wanted one. Like, why did you want to do illustration? Like, what made you be like, I could really make things pop. Like, you really make people pop. You know, it really looks dope. And then I like the, I see a lot of like cartoon esque things on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like people don't do their research, or they they, they don't do enough like. They don't mess up enough to be like, oh, I could have done that. Oh, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I could do this or that. Like, what made you just dive in it? Because you've been showing me. You you really just jumped off the, the deep end, and you, you're fully in it. That was wild, honestly. I did. That was at the beginning of quarantine, and I kind of just, like, my job got cut off with the hours a little bit. So I was like, fuck, I need to, like, pay rent and get food, whatever. So I was like, I made a status on Facebook, and I was like, for five bucks, send me a photo, and I'll turn you into a digital illustration. And like, I did about, I think I counted 50 over the span of like two weeks. Wow. I brought in a good amount of money, like enough to pay rent and not be like, kind of like stress. Um, but it was really cool when I did it back to back to back to back. I like was editing in real time, and I saw my style evolve to the point where at first I was just doing random colors, but then I finally landed on like an impulsive brand, like color palette, which is something I've been searching for so hard. Like, because I went to design school and I love like brand identity. And now I finally have my own colors. So with those digital illustrations, it was literally just kind of like, get down to it. I know my formula. I'm going to knock it out. People are going to love it. I'm going to make a time lapse. People will share it. And it just was like, like you said, it was a domino effect, like 50 illustrations in two weeks. Wild. Wow. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty crazy. It, the, 50 <laughs> illustrations. How many illustrations are you doing a day? Three or four. And like the hack for it was a lot of water, a lot of stretching, and I watched the show Ars Ozark. We were during, talking about that, yeah, the Ozark yeah. show. Ozark kept me company because I was like, I can't just like listen to music the whole time. I'm going to – Ozark was a dope show, dark, but it kept me going with all the illustrations. Yeah, definitely check out Ozark if you haven't seen it. So your name is Impulsive, but you don't take me as an – I don't see you as an impulsive kind of guy. Uh -huh. see, you know, that's where no, the smirk comes in. I know, know right? That's <laughs> when the smirk comes in. When you, you uh, tell me about some of your trips, you're like, yeah, I just went to New Mexico. I was like, oh, that was impulsive. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what are some of your, I guess you could say, top three to four moments in your life that were, you just look back like, damn, that was impulsive? Honestly, like, there's a lot of micro moments where I'm creating and tapping into my own flow where, like, say, I'm just painting. Um, if you see me at a live show painting in Chicago, bass, electronic, hip hop, whatever I do, whatever like the tempo of the song is, maybe I'm like making the, you know, outline of my painting go like with the tempo. So that's like a micro impulsive, but on a large scale impulsive, it really happened a lot in the music festival world because that's like kind of my background. I was always in like the hippie scene, the jam band, and like once like I saw my favorite. Yeah, I'll give you one story. Lollapalooza, this was 2011. Two of my favorite artists were on the lineup, uh, Atmosphere and Pretty Lights. So what's happening at the festival was Atmosphere was right before Pretty Lights. And I was with a group of about like 15 people, and Eminem was headlining that night, and nobody knew Atmosphere. So I was like, I'm going to go see Atmosphere. Who wants to come with me? And not even like my girlfriend at the time wanted to go with me. So I'm like, fuck y'all. I'm going to go see Atmosphere by myself. I get front row for Atmosphere. And I like had, that was when I decided I wanted to be a rapper. When the bass hit and his stage performance, like I was just like, I thought that was so dope. It was kind of like I really admired it. Right after that Atmosphere set, I went straight to Pretty Lights, which if you've ever been to Lollapalooza, is at the Perry stage. And that's like shoulder to shoulder, sweaty, dusty, smelly, like it's hard to get front row. And I got front row for that too. And that was just like a very like heavy impulsive moment. Cause like he was my favorite artist. And after his set he came down and gave everybody a high five. And I was like, fuck yeah, I got a high five from Pretty Lights. And afterwards I was like, everybody's like Eminem was so dope. And I was like, fuck y'all. I saw atmosphere and Pretty Lights. And it was just so inspiring. And that's like a big macro impulsive moment for me. I'd rather see Slim Shady than Eminem. That's just my personal preference, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was like a show apparently where he did his whole like relapse. Um, he didn't go back further than that? Yeah, I think he did. I think he did like the classics. But uh, I mean, I only heard stories because I was at Atmosphere, so. Man, speaking of Atmosphere, uh, this DJ I used to rock with like way back in the day, he entered a contest and he won two Atmosphere tickets to the Aragon Ballroom. Nice. And he's like, oh, you want to go? And like, you know, I was, he had put me onto Atmosphere. So we went and we got like, you know, yes. damn near near the front. And, you know, that's when I was like still on the rise of learning how to be an MC. And just right. the way that this dude had probably no backing vocals, no ins and outs, oh, no so hook, clean. him and his DJ. And he's an older dude. You know what I'm saying? He's been in the yeah. game for a while. Yeah, and yeah. 
he's just ripping it for like an uh, hour and a half. Uh, I'm talking about he's not even slowing down. He's going uh, even harder. And then his DJ, going, yeah. man, he was just scratching like no other. And I was just standing there like everybody's turning up and I'm just literally just like zoned in. Right, as an MC, you're like studying hardcore. Like a really quick other story. When I was in Colorado, I worked at a festival called The Rise and Atmosphere was headlining that. And I got to be side of the stage watching like everything he was doing and right as he came off the stage i've never seen another rapper come off the stage so winded so sweaty like his eyes it looked like he just got out of like a hot steam room and he was just like <sighs> and i was like that's what it fucking takes like that's why he's my favorite rapper and that is why like i'm so inspired by him because after the set he couldn't even talk like i wanted to go up and talk to him but i'm like if i talk to him he's gonna pass out like so slug is definitely pinnacle impulsive inspiration how important do you feel live performances nowadays compared to back then? Because back then it was like, you know, I could buy the CD, I could bump it, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they did live performances in the 90s and they were dope. They were live as hell. Mm. And I feel that it went from this just like down, mm. you know, because I've been to plenty of shows where it's like, I like your music. But man, you you are I'm not rocking with you right. live at all. Right. And I've heard stories of people be like, man, I paid this amount of money to <laughs> go see so and so, and they over there rapping over their lyrics, or their whole entourage just saying the lyrics for them, and then they're just popping in. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying like, yeah, well, yeah, you know, I feel this is an art. You know, and don't get me wrong, there's different levels to this art. You know, you could be an entertainer, you could be a performer. Like Atmosphere is like a performer. He's right. true to his performance. Guys like him, you know, the Kendricks, the J Coles, even more underground guys. Right. So how? How important do you feel, scale of 1 to 10, is that live performance aspect? 10. I mean, that's where I've discovered artists. That's where I've, like, hyped up artists after the show. I go, like, I went to summer camp last year just for one day. That's in Chillicothe down south in Illinois. And I saw a guy who, like, he has a really famous song, uh, uh, Always trying to steal my kisses from you. His name's Ben Harper. And that was his, like, pop hit. But he was performing that Sunday, and I saw him, and like I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. But he was so like on point on the guitar, his singing, his lyrics, and like it just like stole the whole weekend for me. So I think to answer your question, the live performance, like if you're trying to like make true fans, you gotta like show up. You can't just, I mean, I'm not, don't want to name any names, but I went to Soundset two or three years ago, and I saw a really popping MC that's blowing up right now. He, he's basically arrived. But it just the, it wasn't that. You yeah. didn't feel his energy. Yeah, I mean he had the energy, but sometimes he would just let his backing track be the vocal. Like sometimes he would, I don't know. It would just wasn't like I'm like, all right, you make dope music, and I respect that, but I can't. I'm not really like into it because you're just like rapping a bar, and then you just kind of like. I, it was kind of a weird. So it's weird, especially now because a lot of people like to turn up, and like the producers in the mainstream hip hop world are crushing it. So quality. But sometimes that doesn't translate to the show, unless you're really into it. Yeah, I mean, plus nowadays it's like no one's buying albums. No one. You know, if you do, like, you're a true fan. But half the time, I'm going to add this to my Apple Music Library. I'm going to mm -hmm. add this to my Spotify Library. Like, if you're an MC, like, you have to travel. Like, you have yeah. to travel. Like, that's your main income. Trap performances and your merchandise. Definitely. When you go to a show... Those are your top two right there. Because yes, yes. it's like, yeah, you're going to have streaming money, but it's not the same as back then where, you know, oh, I just sold 500,000 units of, you know, this project or whatever. So you MCs out there, practice your live performances. Practice. And don't rap over your lyrics. Have a little ins and outs here and there. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I always preach that. And I've seen so many people, like, they're so dope. And I'm like, I feel like sometimes they're scared of their own voice yeah. to be heard. And they need that backing, you know? So it's like, come on, change the game up. So right. before we, you know, before we before I get to my last question, um, I just want to say thanks for coming out. Appreciate you rocking with Friday Night Lights, Scotty Rocks, you know, rocking with Evolve Studios. Shout out to Wilhelm Duke for introducing us. <laughs> yes. He's not Snowflake. That's Jay Mose. <laughs> but Now he is. So what do you see going forward for yourself as far as the illustrations and the music? Are you going to make them meet in the Dude. middle somewhere? As such, like, this quarantine has been so... I was telling C-Mac before this, I was, like, trying to be present with myself and, like, move forward with integrity. Um, and the things I'm focusing on with music and art is basically I want to evolve my live performance. Like I'm looking into different uh, equipment, mixers, pedals, things that I can put. I, I want to have two mics on stage, one that has effects and one that's kind of just maybe have reverb. 
and just because I want to become more connected with my music when I'm writing it in the creation process like it might be the same for you but that's when I feel really connected and then after that it's kind of like all right I on to the next one so when I perform I want to like become more musical with it like cut out the instrument be my own DJ because I don't want I mean I would love to find another DJ and create with a DJ and have that be a part of the show because that's hip hop that's an element of hip hop but if I can be in control of what I do then I could become super impulsive and just like expand my own musicality that's I think that's how I'm moving forward and I have another idea where say I have a song that has like maybe 10 15 seconds of open room I would love to have a mural behind me and like have a stencil and like have that 15 seconds be for me to like just splatter paint or paint really fast and by the end of like a 30 minute set I have a mural so like it's like there's a lot of things I could do and I don't want to tell myself no because like I can see it in my mind's eye if I can do it there then I just have to figure out 10,000 hours 10,000 hours ten, and the right tools and like sustainably doing it, you know? As long as you have that passion and drive to just, you know, keep doing it, keep going, nothing's going to stop you. Right. So I know you're going to bless us with a performance today. Uh, what Enjoy. song do you think about doing? I got two different songs and I was going to base it off how we're chopping it up. And I think I'm going to do the chopper track. Um, it's called Method to My Madness. It's off of a project that I'm, the first project of quality that I will ever put out sometime soon um called wisdom and nonsense and it's kind of my duality of like i have like wise lyrics in there but i also have just like sporadic flows and that's kind of the nonsense so i'm going to do a nonsense track tonight all right we're going to be back on friday night lights with impulsive as he gives us his method to his madness thank you for having me yep social media platforms three eyes and three e's at the end i've been rapping and talking some passing it wouldn't work if there wasn't any passion study classics that is my fashion everything i do gotta make it proactive does your money embody your actions there's a dark side of what you're flashing my mind keeps getting distracted everything i do gotta do with compassion simmer down break it down to the ground i've been living on now make peace with it now i've been bouncing off the walls see me out don't gotta break it all down 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 now once lost but now again found gotta breathe if you want to make a sound this is the way it is now gotta breathe if you want to make a sound huh? there's a whole lot of nonsense i've been swimming through nothing but nonsense there is nothing got me about this dna poseidon and lostness i've been walking the path of the prophet gotta pack the beliefs in the progress it's a real deal can't top this gotta be clean if you want to mop this blow yo just so you know there's a method in my madness but i'm never gonna know oh so that's how i flow better make it positive that's how you grow it Find my goals and let them know This isn't just for those festivals I gotta let them know That I'm here to grow Yeah Impulsive means business, I know that I got this 
this impulsively living There is no stopping, impulsive means business Mixed with that nonsense, man Let's talk about my process This goes way back to when I was adopted You were not forgotten, my inner child spotted I represent a land Americans call exotic Colombian baby, it's in my DNA The color of my skin, you cannot take away As my body decays, I become more afraid That I'll never live up to the standard in my own brain these days I want that stability, my roots run deep But the system is killing me These days, I spit for our birth, yeah These days, gotta recognize your worth, yeah These days, gotta acknowledge your problems That's the first step for you to go solve them Please stay and reflect in your conscience Don't hesitate, cause this is how I rock this Impulsively living, there are no other options Impulsive means business, I know that I got this Impulsively living, there is no stopping Impulsive means wisdom, mixed with that nonsense Impulsively living, I got no other options Impulsive means business, I know that I got this Impulsively living, there is no stopping Impulsive means wisdom, mixed with that nonsense Nonsense, yeah! Nonsense, yeah. Impulsive means wisdom mixed with that nonsense. Nonsense, yeah. Nonsense, yeah. Impulsive means wisdom mixed with that nonsense.